tell me if this has happened to you. You're scuba diving, you see a cool fish, maybe a sea turtle, an eel, or even a shark. You get your buddy's attention, you point frantically, but your buddy just looks at you with a, what? In this video, you'll learn 15 fish identification signals divers use to point out the cool creatures they see underwater. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and on this channel, you'll see videos on scuba education, equipment, experiences, and environmental awareness. When you're scuba diving, there are so many cool fish and creatures you'll see that less than 0.1% of the world population will experience. But how do you tell your friends what they should be looking at when you point wildly at the reef or out into the blue? Well, that's where hand signals come in, and while these change from location to location, there are quite a few common ones that I've seen divers use in the Caribbean that I wanted to share with you today. I'm gonna do my best to do them on camera for you today, so feel free to laugh at me in the comments down below. First, we have the sea turtle, which is one of my favorites. For a turtle, we make a fist, we take our other hand and put our fingers out like this, and we get to wiggle them like that. Next, we have manta rays. And because of the camera, I won't really be able to do the full flapping motion, but imagine flapping your arms up and down like a bird. So I'll do it close like this, and that way it's in frame, but imagine the full arm, and that's how you call out a manta ray. Now, how about an angelfish? These are beautiful creatures as well, and because they have the angel name, we make a halo with our fingers. So we can actually just make a little circle right above our head. Sometimes people do it this way, pointing down instead, and that's for the halo for an angelfish. Next, we have a moray eel. And if you wanna see one of these things in action, I actually have a YouTube short where there's a lionfish head that is being fed to a green moray eel, a huge one. He swallows it in one bite, it's pretty crazy and reminds you that you need to respect your fish. So green moray eel, how do we do that? We signal it by doing this. Moray eels are constantly breathing. That's what that motion is. So even though it looks like they're biting at you or something like that, uh, they're really just breathing, which is kind of interesting. Now, everyone loves this one, but what happens when you see a shark and you're underwater? So really, I will say up front that sharks are completely misunderstood creatures. They very, very, very rarely attack humans. And usually, if anything, they are more exploratory bites than actual bites trying to kill anything. But sharks are the coolest things out there. They're one of the coolest things I've ever dove with and highly suggest that you uh, do some research about them. They are so important to our environment and they are not the, the scary, scary predator that Jaws and other movies make you think. Even though I'm gonna be reacting to some of those movies at some point in the future, remember that sharks are actually really cool. So that said, how do I point out a shark? Well, that one is this. You might see divers do this sometimes. They like to do this uh, sometimes to acknowledge each other as well. They'll go like this um, or take the lead. Uh, sometimes people do it that way as well. Sharks are apex predators, so doing the single fin motion like that is how we identify them. Now, what about a specific shark? So some of them do have specific callouts. One of the ones that I know that's very popular is the hammerhead shark. And you can actually do this by making two fists and put them to the side of your head. Go ahead and meme this if you want. Link down in the comments below if you do that though. But hammerhead sharks, really, really cool. They have those very distinct features. You can still point out shark if you wanted to or shark hammerhead or something like that. Uh, normally we just would call out hammerhead. Now, number seven, lionfish. Lionfish are like this. Um, you kind of interlock your fingers and, and I guess it's maybe to represent the uh, lion's mane or really more so the, the venomous spines that come out. Uh, lionfish are venomous. They are also an invasive species to the Caribbean. So you can often uh, fish for these if you wanted to go spear fishing. Uh, a lot of different dive charters out there actually offer lionfish distinctive specialties. I'll have a whole video about what a distinctive specialty is versus a normal specialty at Patty, but lionfish, really cool. Interlock your fingers, call them out like this, and then someone with a spear might go and take it out, which is kind of nice. Now, number eight, dolphins. These are so cool, so beautiful. Unfortunately, I've never actually been in the water diving with them yet, but I have seen them uh, playing in the wake of our boat and seen giant pods in La Paz, Mexico, for example, in the Sea of Cortez. Such beautiful creatures, so cool, and you definitely want to call these out. So to do that, you can either take one finger or your hand, and you kind of make the wave motion, you know, like dolphin jumping in the waves, going up and down. Uh, some people do it with their finger instead. Dolphins are super cool, super smart mammals. Definitely respect them. Don't hang on to their fins or anything like that because they can actually drag you really deep too quickly or up to the surface too quickly, which is extremely dangerous as a scuba diver. So please respect all of these fish, but especially dolphins, just because they can and will drag you all around if you aren't careful. Now, number nine is the stonefish. These are extremely venomous. 
please do not touch these. Do not play with them. They are uh, definitely, definitely going to hurt if you get stung by one of these. Uh, I actually have videos of their closely related relatives, the uh, scorpion fish from the Caribbean that you can find on my channel. And I actually have a really cool YouTube short where one's blended into the rocks. And just like scorpion fish, stonefish blend in like crazy. So they're hard to see. And when you spot one, it's really cool to call them out so people can come in get photos of it, get video of it, and just check them out in general. To call it a stonefish, you're gonna to wanna to make your hand flat, take your hand as a rock, and <laughs> stonefish. Makes sense, a lot of these are kind of self-explanatory once you know them, and they're quite easy to remember afterwards as well. Now, before we continue, if you're getting value out of these tips, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and like the video for more content like this. It really helps me out. Moving on to number 10, this is the trumpet fish. Trumpet fish, really easy to remember, you're gonna play the trumpet. Trumpet fish are super cool, really unique looking fish and always fun to kind of check out. They hang out above reefs often, so they're somewhat common if you're on a coral reef, but always a cool sight. I love them. I mean, I think they're just such a neat type of fish and blow the trumpet to go ahead and call it out to your dive buddy. Next is the barracuda and boy, do they have some teeth on them. I've actually seen barracuda just hanging out at our uh, safety stop line, which has been really interesting off the coast of North Carolina. Uh, but they sometimes are in giant packs, sometimes there's just one or two of them. Barracuda are really cool, and they actually have these bars on the side of their body. So we actually do a symbol of bars, three of them, one, two, three. And that's how we call out the barracuda and signal for that to our buddies. Now we have number 12, which is gonna be a crab moving into the crustacean. So crabs, pretty straightforward. Most people can probably guess what this one is, but I like to do this for a crab. Some people will also go down like this instead. And you know, crabs kind of have their arms hooked forward instead of upwards like this. So having them down and making the little claws like that for a crab. Next, we have this spiny lobster. And again, I actually have some really cool YouTube shorts on this as well. Uh, spiny lobster are known for their spiny antenna. So what we do is we make a V with our hand and put that on our forehead, spiny lobster. Now, before I move on to the next one, I did want to say that if you haven't seen some of these fish before, you aren't really sure what I'm talking about, or you just kind of want to be able to look up what you see when you go on a dive and next time you'll know what the hand signal is for that, check out the Reef Fish Identification Guide. These books are amazing, and I'm going to link a three pack down below to all the ones that you'll want for like Florida, Bahamas, and Caribbean. You can look up any fish or crustacean that you see, and that way you know for next time you say, ah, okay, that's what a spiny lobster is, and now I know the signal for spiny lobster is right here. So I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check that out. Next, we have number 14, a slipper lobster. You make a fist with your hand, you take your other hand and you slip over your knuckles or slide over your knuckles for slipper lobster. And spoiler alert, I know I said I was gonna do 15 hand signals, but I have a few extra ones. So I'm gonna throw those in here at the end as well. Alrighty, number 15, which is one of my favorite ones to find out there. This is the seahorse. And really to do this properly, I should be standing further from the camera so you can get the full body into it, but I'm gonna go ahead and save myself from the embarrassment and stay seated here. So for a seahorse, we are gonna ride the horse. So what does that mean? We're gonna grab the reins and we are gonna ride. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this on camera right now, but yes, ride for the seahorse. Alrighty, number 16, this is literally the best dive I've ever had. I was in La Paz in the Sea of Cortez and I got to dive with sea lions. I had sea lion pups coming right up to me and I'll try to show some footage of that on the screen right now. So when you see a sea lion, you definitely want to call it out to your buddies. And what do we do for sea lions? Well, we're going to clap in front of our body, clap our hands. Just think of sea lions and the barking that they do. Moving along with these bonus ones past the original 15, let's move on to number 17, a puffer fish. So puffer fish, sometimes also called a box fish. Um, there are quite a few different types of puffer fish out there. There's porcupine fish, for example. I have a YouTube short of that as well. Uh, puffer fish, you might be able to guess this one like some other ones out there, but this one is taking your hands and maybe no sound effect, just puffer fish. Now we have number 18, and that's gonna be a stingray. So for a stingray, I like to think of that stinger on the back, and this is how I remember. I put my hand flat, and then I use my other finger as a tail for the stingray itself. Now number 19, and earlier I talked about the stonefish. I said they're somewhat related to scorpion fish. So for scorpion fish, I've actually seen two different hand signals. So I'm gonna show both of them. We're gonna do either this, which is interlocking your hands, kind of like a lionfish, but right above your head. Um, I don't like that one because it does look very much like a lionfish. It's just above your head instead. So instead what I do is I take my hand flat and similar to the stingray, I actually like to curve my finger like a scorpion stinger would be. 
And while scorpion fish don't have stingers like a scorpion on land would have, um, this is very clear that like, you know, stinging motion like a scorpion, right? Scorpion fish, kind of easy to tell that way. Now, number 20, what do you do if you see a baby or a juvenile, for example? For that one, it's actually rocking the baby. So normally your hands wouldn't be up by your face like this necessarily, but for the camera frame, I wanted to make sure it was on camera. You can go ahead and just rock the baby back and forth like that. That's how you call it a juvenile or a baby or something like that. So that's my list of 20, even though I said 15, hand signals for Caribbean fish identification. If it's not on this list, you can look up some other ones. There are definitely other ones out there that people have done or ones that people have created and maybe between their friends they've come up with. But when you really aren't sure what else to say or you just need to communicate with your dive buddy in general, you can either get a slate and write something down or better yet, you can find the regular hand signals we use as divers every day to communicate. So with that, you're all ready for your next Caribbean trip and calling out all the fish that you see. Pack your bags, your save a dive kit, and go have fun. Wait, you don't have a save a dive kit yet? Well, check out this video on how you can build your own. Stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.